Mark Latham is the One Nation leader, and I'm so pleased we get to talk to him right now. There he is in Camden. Lovely to see you, mate. A couple of weeks out from Christmas. What's the One Nation Christmas party like? <laughs> we'll find out on Friday, Paul. Uh, <laughs> uh, pretty lively, I suppose. Uh, Non-woke, of course. Uh, there'll be plenty of Christmas. We can actually say the word Christmas. Yes. That probably sets us apart from today's Lip Matt Keen Liberal Party and uh, uh, the Labor left and the Greens. Yeah, well, plenty of Christmas cheer. Yeah, and, and of course the Greens, they don't do the Christmas party, they do, you know, the end of patriarchy party on a 12-month cycle, which is what they like to celebrate, rather than offend anyone. Yeah, well, no-one's one, no one's taking up their invitation to go to their miserable uh, sad fest, I can tell you. Nobody's, <laughs> nobody ever goes to the Greens party with a smile on their face, do they? Do me you know, a favour. They, they, they're all vegan and... Uh... Yeah, do me a favour. The New South Wales Parliament Secret Santa, can you just please give them a lump of coal? <laughs> a couple. <laughs> All right. A couple. It's speaking of. Right over the noggin. So we get this scenario, right, where Albo's apparently going to fix everything by intervening in the market like sort of it's Venezuela, right? Telling a commodity, uh, telling people how much a commodity uh, can be paid for, right? Supposedly on gas he can do it, but he needs the states to do it. But as you know, coal royalties prop up most of the state budgets. Now, these state premiers all used to go nuts when they were told about what COVID restrictions to put in place. Why would any of them agree to what Albo wants apart from, well, slavishly following the new king? Yeah, Albanese's trying to get the states to do his dirty work, Paul, mainly for the reason that in the Australian Constitution, the federal government would be obliged to pay the companies financial compensation for their lost revenue. If you cap the prices of coal and gas, the companies would get compensation under the Australian Constitution, just compensation clause. So he wants the states to do it because they've got no such clause. But for them, uh, it's a double problem. They'd probably be sued by the companies for compensation, as you pointed out, regarding the um, uh, rich uh, coal royalties. Uh, the, they'd uh, take a hit to their own budget. So Albanese uh, wants the state. The states would be total mugs to do this, absolute mugs to do his dirty work for him. And anyway, Paul, didn't this guy have um, a rolled gold election promise of bringing down the prices of electricity by $275? It was all going to work, it was all modelled, it was all costed. Whatever happened to that? I mean, what a complete fraud. Well, but also, and this is what I sort of started the show with, which was, I get that much of the political media in this country are either of the left or wanted to change. They all work off, and you know, remember this about Canberra, they work off access, right? The longer a government's around, the less people will talk to you. So a new broom's going to answer your phone calls and text each other and, you know, the inside scoop and the breaking news, that, this, that and the other, right? But if, but if again, if... Tony Abbott says, I'm going to stop the boats. And then once he gets into office, says, maybe by 2025, they'd go ballistic. This bloke talked about, talked about cost of living. It's all got worse in the six months since he's been there. He talked about the 275, which was dead on day one, yet no follow-up. No follow -up. In fact, Laura Tingle talked about this very issue tonight on 7.30, where she said the opposition was playing the broken Porimus card. Well, isn't that what the journalists should be doing? But as you pointed out, a lot of these uh, media bureaus have been gutted. They've got very few people left. And access journalism is on the rise. If they don't get the access by running soft stories about Albanese, they've got no job, they've got no story. So that's a huge problem. But the Australian people aren't silly about this. Albanese had three huge promises. And he said these would automatically come into place if you got rid of the Morrison government. He was going to fix cost of living pressures, he was going to deliver real wage rises and he was going to cut your electricity bill by $275. Now, none of that is happening. And I think the Australian people are starting to realise the Albanese government was elected with no firm workable plans for solving the big issues in front of the country. And you can look at the education system, productivity, micro-reform, all these big issues we've got, the, the uh, supply chain issues, labour shortages. Uh, this guy hasn't got a clue. Mm. And the idea that uh, the states are going to put their hand up uh, and at a huge financial cost and exposure to themselves to fix his electricity promise is just fanciful. Well, and if they do it, they are doing it for the political fix of helping out their mate. Like, literally, the majority of Labor states, that's what it is. It's not about helping any normal people in, in all of this. But, look, I get it. People were done with the last mob. They wanted to flush them. Fair enough, right? That's the way it works. It's a great thing about our system. But then this mob turns around and we can't pretend they didn't make some promises before they became the government.